Good Sunday evening to you all. This is Pastor Joe Wood of Pleasant Hill Baptist Church in Elkin, uh, North Carolina. Um, I cannot believe we're in the last day of January 2021. I hope you've all had a great week this week and are ready and excited just to hear another word from the book of Habakkuk tonight. Now, I want to go ahead and give you kind of a, a, a where we're headed into this study, okay? Uh, in the next few weeks, uh, what's going to take place is... In the remaining portion of chapter 2, we find God giving stern warnings. We find Him giving five warnings to different individuals of the Babylonians. And what He's going to do here is, He's going to tell what is about to take place, the judgment that is about to come. And so tonight, the first warning that we're going to see is the warning to thieves, okay? A warning to thieves. And so that's why I have entitled the message, A Warning to Thieves. Now, in verses 6 through 20, we find the word woe five times. You can see it in verse 6, you can see it in verse 9, verse 12, verse 15, and verse 19, okay? And so that is God, and we're going to see here in just a moment, um, woe, and I'll just go ahead and tell you, woe here uh, carries several shades of meaning in the Old Testament, uh, but is more often used to express coming doom and judgment is a cry of alarm. This is Preacher's Outline in the Sermon Bible. Uh, it is a cry of alarm and despair over the destruction to come. Its meaning includes the threat of punishment, yet a declaration of woe uh, is much more than the mere threat or wish that someone be punished. It is a cry of sorrow for a judgment that is certain, and I want to repeat that word, it is, for, it is a cry of sorrow for a judgment that is certain to come. So, Let's go to verse 6 in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 6. And this is God's first warning as he's telling Habakkuk what is about to take place. Okay, so go with me to verse 6 in chapter 2. It says, Shall not all these take up a parable against him and a taunting proverb against him and say, Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his? Now how long? And to him that ladeth himself with thick clay... Shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee, and awake that shall vex thee, and thou shalt be there uh, be for booties unto them? Because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people uh, shall spoil thee, because of men's blood, and for the violence of the land of the city, and all that that dwell therein. Okay? Let's go to the Lord in prayer before we go any further. Father, thank you for the day. God, thank you for the blessings, Lord, that you have given us, Lord. God, I pray now you would just bless the reading and the proclamation of your word tonight is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, and so as we get back into the scripture here in verses 6 through 8, we see God is giving a stern warning to Habakkuk. He's giving a stern statement here in verses 6 through 8. And so tonight I would like for us to see the serious warning and how it is applicable not only in that day and time, but is it applicable for you and I uh, in the certain in the the uh, uncertain circumstances that we're in? So when we see his warning, I would like for us to consider a couple of things. Okay, the first one I want you to see is in verse six. We see God's direct warning to the thieves. God's direct warning to the thieves. It says, "Woe to him that increaseth." That which is not his. So there is that word in verse 6, woe. Now, remember, what did I say about the definition of woe? It is a cry of sorrow for, his, for a judgment that is certain to come. So as God was saying here to Habakkuk, 
Woe to them that steal. Woe to them that are thieves. Judgment is about to take place for them. Oh my goodness, could you understand the importance and the, uh, the, the, the declaration that God was declaring here? Listen, because they have stolen, here is what is about to take place. So as we see God's direct warning here, we see that he was warning the thieves, okay? Now, as we think about a thief, what do we first think of? Obviously, we think about one that steals from another. There are people that rob others in their homes. There are people that rob others in their cars. There are people that rob others even just standing, you know, uh, standing uh, beside one another. You know, we have RFID uh, wallets now because of thieves. That's exactly why. And you and I know, um, my dear brothers and sisters, that stealing has become more rapid in this day and time. There are more thieves in this day and time. And why is that? It is a sin problem. It is none other than a sin problem. There are people that steal from grocery stores. There are people that steal from Walmart. There are people that steal from convenience stores. But I want us to think about this. As you and I are Christians, I believe if someone makes a mistake, and, you know, I believe as a Christian, I hope and pray that you don't steal from anyone on purpose. But I believe if even if you make a mistake and you don't make it right, that is still being that is still considered a thief. I would like to give you an example here. Um, many of you, if you live in the Elkin, um, uh, you know, if you live in the Elkin area, uh, and um, and, you know, you either go to Walmart or you go to Food Line for your groceries and, you know, your toiletries and all those different things. Well, I personally like Walmart pickup. I love doing the mobile order. It's very easy. It's very uh, fast and uh, very user-friendly. And, and Annika and I, we often use it uh, weekly. Um, but there are times that I for we forget to do it or I have to go in there uh, and um, and I have to, you know, pay for my... I had to go get stuff. Well... Uh, it's been a few months back. I don't remember, um, but it has been in the COVID. Um, it's been during the COVID time. Um, I was. Um, I had went into Walmart. I had to purchase some items, um, and and as I, as I went to check out, I, I do the self checkout, and the reason why is because it's faster. I want to get in and I want to get out. Um, you know, I know some people like to stay in Walmart for hours at a time. I like to stay in there seconds at a time, and I like to get out. And so as I was checking out, I was, you know, putting all my stuff, you know, I was uh, scanning all my items and all that. And, uh, I, you know, I left and uh, the, the greeter said, hope you have a great day and all that. And so I left. Well, as I was placing my items into the uh, into my truck, um, I, I noticed that one, one item uh, was not in a, a bag. Now, and I thought, well, maybe it fell out. But I want to make sure that I, I paid for this item. So what did I do? I got my receipt out and I noticed, I said, this item is not on there. Now, um, so I had one of two things that I, I could do at this time. Either I could just go on my way and say, well, you know, Walmart makes billions of dollars each day and they're going to be okay. They're, this item, it wasn't a big item. Um, it, it, I don't even think it was 2 or $3, but, you know, um, or I said, or I could go make, um, I could go make things right. Well, so what did I do? Uh, you know, the Holy Spirit came over me and said, Joe, you know what you need to do. And I knew what I needed to do. And so what did I do? I went back in and I went up to the greeter and I said, ma'am, I said, I would like to, uh, I'd like to talk with you just for a second. I said, ma'am, I, um, um, I said, I, I did not mean to do this on purpose. I just checked out. I said, you can see, here's my receipt. I said, and uh, I, I promise, ma'am, I did not mean to do this at all. I, I just literally, it slipped under one of my bags, and I'm here to, to pay for this item and to make things right. And she said, honey, it's okay. She said, it, you know, it, it was just a mistake. She said, but yeah, go ahead, go to the self-checkout, check out your item, and you can be on your way. And I said, thank you, ma'am. And she said, Sir, I said, yes. She said, you know, a lot of people wouldn't do that. A lot of people just went on their way. I said, well, ma'am, I want you to understand. I said, um, I am a pastor, I said, of a local church. And I said, and I'm a Christian, number one. I said, and uh, I have to give an account of everything uh, that, I, that I do in my life. 
I said, I have a responsibility before a holy God to live my life in such a way that is pleasing unto Him. And I said, and if I had went on my way, I would have sinned and faced the consequences of my sin. And, and I say all this to tell, I, I say this to tell you this. I'm not boasting about myself. I made a mistake. I made a literal mistake, but I tried my best to make it right. And I do believe that I did make it right by going back in and, and you know, and doing all those things. And I believe if, if I wouldn't have, that would have been stealing. I do believe that, even though I didn't mean to, but I knew I could make it right. And so what did I do? I did make it right. And I believe God blessed that. And, and so when I say that, we, we think about making mistakes and not making it right. We just say, well, I made a mistake. No, and I believe in the eyes of God that's still stealing. Oh, but not only do we think about uh, the ones that steal from others, but I want you to see also we think about uh, extortioners. For example, what is that? As one uh, wrote, extortioner is the crime of attaining money or something else of value by abusing one's office of authority. And so what is that? It is the ones that take advantage of people and run up prices. Obviously, there's been many, uh, much of this over uh, the last few months during COVID. How many of us know businesses that have raised prices over certain things like toilet paper, uh, Lysol of any kind, uh, even meat prices have went up? Now, I don't want you to think that I am being critical of any local business around here in Elkin. I am not. See, what happens is um, they have to, obviously, they have to price things uh, given how much they have in them. You know, if someone charges you $5, you can't charge somebody else $2. That'd be losing $3, okay? Can you keep, can you keep a business running doing that? Absolutely not. And so what's happened is these big companies are seeing the supply and demand, and they're thinking, hey, we need, there is more demand, so let's raise, uh, even though, we, you know, even though uh, we, we have the supply, let's raise the prices so that we uh, can make more money. And that does sound like a good business plan, but I also I think at times businesses can take advantage of others, take advantage of situations and, and whatnot, and that is considered stealing. As Christians, you know, we have to realize and understand that this is not our home. This is not where our prize is. This is not where our rewards are. And we need to try to live our lives as pure and holy before God as anybody. Okay? And so as we think about businessmen that cheating others, you know, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this one as well. But we all know and understand that there is sketchy business everywhere. There's sketchy businessmen everywhere, and it's from top to bottom, from the biggest, um, from the biggest to the smallest. There are people that take advantage of others to just to get ahead in businesses every day. You hear people saying that certain things cost one thing, but they only cost uh, a, a certain amount. And what they're doing is they're taking that excess and they're putting it in their pockets. <laughs> I've heard many, many stories of businessmen doing that. There have been many, and I mean sketchy transactions, that have happened throughout the years because of businessmen. Um, but that is okay uh, in their eyes. But you and I know it is not okay in God's eyes. And that is a form of a thief. That is a form of stealing, my dear brothers and sisters. As God told him in uh, verse 8, look at this. It says, Because thou hast spoiled many nations... All the remnant of the people shall spoil thee. I want to read another. Uh, I want to read another version. Um, I want to read just a, a, a abbreviated version of this. It says, "Because you have plundered many nations, all the remnant of the peoples uh, shall plunder you. For the blood of man and of violence to the earth, to cities and who all dwell in." So, what was God saying there? He's saying they plundered and they stole from many nations. They were cruel and ruthless. And because of their cruelty and their ruthlessness, God was giving the direct warning to them in verse 6. And so not only do we see God's direct warning to the thieves, but I want you to see God's direct judgment against the thieves in verse 7. It says what's in verse 6 and 7. He says, and how long, this is the last portion of verse 6. He says, and how long, and to him that ladeth himself with thick clay, shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee, and awake that shall vex thee, and thou shalt be for booties 
unto them. So what does he say here in verses six, the latter portion of verse 6 and verse 7? God gives two direct judgments that would take place for the thieves. First, it says they will be scorned. He's saying they will be scorned. The Babylonians would be rejected. The people that they had been taking, uh, been taking advantage of, uh, would uh, they'd been doing wrong, would scorn them. They wouldn't be nice to them, and were probably uh, won't revenge. You know, just like the old saying, "What comes around goes around." That's what certainly was about to take place. Because of their ruthless and arrogant behavior, the nations would rise up against them and give them a piece of their own medicine. They would have their joy for a brief period of time, but revenge was certainly coming because of their decisions that they had made. How many of us think uh, that people will just uh, forgive and forget the faults that we have done against them? Certainly all of us don't think that, but it is hard to to earn someone's trust back after wrong has been done. Many, and I emphasize the word, many individuals have been ruined by stealing or doing wrong. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, the reputation that you build not only in your home, workplace, and community is vitally important. You say, Joe, well, the only reputation that really matters is what Jesus Christ thinks of me. And certainly I agree with that. However, your reputation is critical for your influence of others. So if you are robbing them in your business or in some other way, how do you think that is showing the love of Christ and what type of impact are you going to have? Certainly, in my opinion, it's not going to be good. So that's why it is so critical to conduct ourselves in a godly manner no matter where we are at. But not only do we see that they will be scorned, but I want you to see they also will be opposed. What does it say here? It says, Shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee and awake that shall vex thee? Their victims, what were they going to do? They were going to rise up against them. The nations that they had held a captive and took advantage of would rise up against them and take back what was rightfully theirs. Karma or whatever you want to call it always comes back and gets you. Just like the Babylonians, individuals have always had their fun for a period of time, but when it comes down to it, justice is always served. Some of you may say, well... Some have done me wrong in the past, but nothing has uh, been done to them. I would like to share something with you from Preacher's Outline of Sermon Bible. It states, Even those who seemingly get away with their crimes today and who are not caught up in this lifetime will be judged at the judgment of God. Because in Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 through 15, it says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand open, which is the book of life. Excuse me. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books, once again, that is plural, were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And so in closing, my dear brethren, in verse 8, we see... Uh, that they plundered and stole from many nations. They were cruel and ruthless. And this is why the things that were about to take place were going to happen. Stealing, being considered a thief, is sin. And your sin will catch up with you. And you will pay for your sin. The Babylonians did. Sodom and Gomorrah did. And I can promise you this. If God don't chastise our sin as a nation, He would have to apologize to all the other nations that have fallen away and have been punished. God don't accept sin and never will. So if you have wronged someone in your life, you need to fix it today. You may have been you may have borrowed something from someone and have never given it back. That is still sin, my dear brothers. That is not yours. I remember when I worked at the golf shop, people would borrow a club and would never get it back. 
That is absolutely stealing, period. As Christians, let examine, let us examine ourselves and see if there is any wickedness in us and get it right before it's too late. Trust me, you will give an account before a holy God of everything you have done, and you don't want something like stealing be on your record. So let us make things right today. This is a stern warning from God, a warning to thieves, and one that we need to take to heart and fix things today before it is too late. God bless you is my prayer. I hope and pray that you will have a great week.